The next tool we will be focusing on is developing scenarios based on megatrends. So what is scenario building? Scenario building is part of the visioning group of tools where we start discussing different imaginary futures that still could theoretically happen. And why we do so? We do so in order to inform our decision making today allowing ourselves to imagine what if situations or scenarios and pretend as if they could happen gives us a fresh perspective on the decisions we make today and helps us anticipate how the future might differ from today and how to develop policies that are resilient across a range of different futures or across a range of possible scenarios. So scenario building is not about predicting the future. Its main purpose is to help us unlearn some of our learned assumptions, to challenge some of our core beliefs and start developing approaches which might at first seem counterintuitive to us. Scenarios we develop are not meant to be right or wrong, good or bad. Instead, they offer interesting and in some cases challenging or controversial pictures of the future. They primarily provide a safe space to explore alternative ways the policy area might develop and the choices that various stakeholders might make under different conditions. And when it comes to the time frame and looking into the future, although there is no set number of years we should be uh, uh, looking into the future, it is proposed it is within a medium time frame, so say 50 to 15 to 30 years from now, as this allows for a visioning which is reachable and achievable. It's not that far away. And at the end of the exercise, we should be able to identify opportunities and threats that we were previously blind to. When should we be using it? So primarily when we need to expand on our visioning predictions and put them in a context of wider mega trends affecting our society. So something that is definitely within our immediate uh, uh, um, reach uh, in order to be able to start designing an approach to achieve it. And why is it useful? So it lets you do three things. First of all, it supports your strategy work. So the exercise allows you to create a shared overview of the situation and to identify questions that are essential for the future. So it can definitely help you or it can de definitely impact your strategy work. Secondly, it is a basis for scenarios, enabling you to think about a couple of alternative future developments related to the tangents uh, and form alternative scenarios based on them. Now, what is a tangent? Tangent is Tensions refer to conflicting or opposing options between two or more trends. For instance, uh, a very basic uh, um, example of a tension is uh, um, when we start thinking about our forests or future of forests. There are people who think that they should be preserved as intact natural habitats uh, left as they are. And then there are other people uh, who think that they should be used for productive purposes, for getting wood for construction and heating and energy out of them. So there is a tension on, for example, how to approach the future forest. And thirdly, it is useful for teaching. Uh, you can use the template uh, we are presenting to illustrate changes and to support the establishment of a bigger overview. So there are different methodologies and exercises to conduct a scenario building ex exercise. Um, and here we present one uh, uh, done by a Finnish innovation agency called CITRA, which focuses on a pathway that looks at the wider social, economic, environmental mega trends that are already affecting our society and consequently our actions in the midterm future. The exercise is built around one single template consisting of two parts, one which is pre-populated acting as a reminder uh, of megatrends to get you inspired and to refresh your megatrends observations. And this is the one you can see on the screen. And the other, which is empty, where you will be inputting your own specific parameters. And in the template, we focus on five themes, which you can again see on the screen. The urgency of ecological regeneration, which is definitely, since it is in the central, it is located in the central of this piece, uh, it is also uh, central um, to our wider agenda today. The strengthening of relational power, the aging and diversification of the population, technology becoming embedded in everything, and finally, the redefinition of our economy. So these are the basic themes we will be working under uh, during this uh, exercise. Given that the key factor influencing the future is our response to the ecological sustainability crisis, climate change, decreasing biodiversity, the excessive 
consumption of resources and waste-related problems, in the center of our attention uh, will be the issue of ecological regeneration as a matter of urgency. And from there, we start identifying individual trends falling under the remaining four themes, population, power, economy, and technology. Um, the, this century, or 2020s, and actually the, the um, reminder, remainder of the century in its, entirely, in its entirety will be crucial to our success in reconstructing society to make it sustainable and resilient while adapting to the changes brought about by climate change and decreasing biodiversity. And that is why the urgency of ecological reconstruction is at the center of the general picture. It is important to contemplate and discuss what it means for the area or for the sector or any other aspect that has been chosen for review in your case. So let's start with a more uh, uh, specific steps on how to conduct the exercise. So first of all, we will define the perspective from which we approach mega trends. So it can be your sector, your organization, your, your country, or the municipality that you uh, represent. And again, as you will see in step number six, which is the last step, we will be repeating this step in the end, but from a slightly different perspective, an imaginary future one. Whereas this step number one has nothing to do with the imaginary future, it rather uh, uh, um, positions you uh, under a very real set of circumstances you work under. Step number two is you will be discussing the urgency of ecological reconstruction and what it means from the perspective you chose, you just chose. So you will be focusing on the very key topic, uh, which is the ecological reconstruction and the climate change uh, issue. Step number three, you will be listing individual trends that you think are relevant for your individual challenge, your individual project, your individual case, that fall under that fall under different themes that we have mentioned. So power, technology, economy, and population, and are related to your chosen specific perspective. And to do this, you can use cards developed by Citra to provide more inspiration, but definitely need to adapt them to your local context. And some of the uh, cards, six of them, we have put here uh, on the slide, kind of just to, uh, um, to, to serve as inspiration to you. And they can be used in a multitude of ways, as a game, to create a story about a future, to prioritize possible future events, to invent a future service, solution, product, or method relevant to your challenge. Uh, it, they really do serve um, a variety of, uh, um, um, of options. Step number four, um, the step that follows is, uh, it says that you need to identify the tensions and uncertainties um, that you are working under. And as previously mentioned, tensions refer to conflicting or opposing uh, uh, options between two or more trends or issues. Uh, so you need to identify those tensions uh, between the, the, the trends that you have listed under different themes, uh, under different, uh, under the four themes, which we have done in the previous step, and write them down as questions. For example, birth rate versus employment rate. How do those two relate? This step is important for addressing uncertainties and wider questions that are essential for the future. What are the questions that should be resolved now? In addition to identifying the tensions, you can also think about their development. Is one direction of development stronger than another? Can a completely new direction be found or will a state of tension remain? We will be using the key theme of the need for urgency of ecological reconstruction to confront it to other megatrends. For instance, we will now be mentioning those related to the filled-in template, the retentions between the uh, strengthening of relational power and the urgency of ecological reconstruction, uh, which is related to finding a balance between quick decisions, engagement, and the strengthening of democracy. Or, the tension between the aging and diversification of the population and the urgency of ecological reconstruction is related to finding the right balance between quick action and the need to reduce inequality. Further down, when technology becomes embedded in everything, the tension that emerges is 
between seeing technology as an opportunity and as a threat with regard to ecological reconstruction. And finally, looking at the redefinition of the economy, the tension is related to the problems of our economic system, in particular with respect to the concentration of wealth and environmental impacts, among other things. So we have just mentioned four kind of prototypical tensions that we see occurring between the four key themes and the wider, uh, the central theme of the climate change. Now, you should change the tangents uh, according to your particular challenge and the context you are in. So play around with it, adapt it, uh, adapt them to be, uh, to speak more uh, to your individual uh, project. Step number five, in five, in this step we will be gaining insights. So um, opportunities to influence the future usually manifest themselves through tangents. Uh, they're very thought-provoking and they kind of force you to be creative uh, and to come up with opportunities, with new opportunities to influence the future. So what kinds of opportunities to act do you find? Questions formed on the basis of the tangents help to discover solutions as they force you to think strategically and choose between different options. What kind of future do you want to build together and how? There are many solutions. However, you should bear in mind that there might not be a solution for every question that you pose, that you will have. And being able to identify tangents is a good first step towards influencing the future. And finally, uh, step number six. You are now ready to start thinking about a couple of alternative future developments related to tangents or questions that you identified above uh, during previous slides and form alternative scenarios based on them, using the what if and then what questions. Be creative and primarily be radical, but stay in the realm of plausible alternative futures. Rely on cards we mentioned to provide a source of inspiration for developing future scenarios. Now is the time to be bold and creative in imagining a better future. And for this, you should use uh, another tool, part of this bigger uh, exercise, which is called the visual story tool. And this is a visioning method which, encourage you, which encourages you to suspend disbelief and imagine a future so brilliant, so spectacular, that your success ends up on the media front pages uh, everywhere, or as a visual cover story hence the name. The steps of doing this exercise are as follows. You will again be defining yourself, but this time from the future perspective. This is something we mentioned uh, during the step number one, that we will be kind of repeating it, but this time from the imaginary future uh, dimension. So define who you are and the role you played during the process to reach that future and your now new or adapted role in this new future. Then imagine that you are 20 years from now, or the interval, whatever the interval is that you have uh, decided, and start imagining what does your future and the context of your future look like. Depending on the challenge you're solving, where do people live? How do they live? How do they move? How do they spend their days? What does the environment look like? Is it nature-based or a very urban dystopian even? What social and, and technical options are available? Which technology is needed? How does it affect culture and, and the structure of society? So try to be imaginative, try to cover all angles of uh, societal uh, de development in order to describe the future with as many details as possible. Here you have to suspend all judgment and simply let your ideas flow freely. You can use post-its to write down as many ideas as you can describing what a future looks like. Now use the canvas made up of six parts, which you can see on the screen, three in the, in the uh, upper uh, part uh, of this image and uh, three below, each one describing a different aspect of the future or the process to achieve it in the format of a news story. And those um, six parts are cover, cover story, so something that will literally be part of the newspaper cover, radical ideas, so write down a couple, three, four of the most important, most radical ideas uh, that you see happening in the future. Then quotes. Use a few um, imaginary quotes 
which will give extra flavor, so to speak, extra meat to your story, which will be uh, um, representative of different types of actors, dif different types of um, stakeholders um, saying those quotes. Then headlines, again, a few very short, very basic, but quite catchy uh, uh, or clickbaity uh, uh, um, uh, sentences. And finally, stack of paper and images. So try to come up with different Im images. It could be uh, photos, uh, your illustrations, uh, uh, anything visual to kind of uh, uh, back up this big story that, uh, that you will be reporting on. And at the end, filled in canvas will be the final future or scenario that you come up with. And this is how we end this exercise.